Okay, so these uh, notes today are in your class notes tab in OneNote. Um, I have not put anything into Schoology. Uh, we're going to try to get through these the best we can, and uh, that will be the only thing that we're going to be doing today is Le Chatelier's principle when it uh, deals with um, a chemical reaction at equilibrium. Uh, so there is the definition uh, when the process in a state of equilibrium is stressed by a change in concentration, temperature, pressure, the reaction will counter react to this shift by minimizing the effect of the change before returning back to equilibrium. So essentially it means like something like this. If uh, you have a chemical reaction and let's say it's your body standing on both feet and someone pushes you in the shoulder, uh, you almost tip over. Uh, but you do everything in your power and you right yourself and you stand back on two feet, no problem. You don't actually fall over. That exact same thing happens in a chemical reaction. So the pushing of you on the shoulder is analogous to this word shift here in the second uh, paragraph. Uh, make either more products shift right or it'll make reactants and shift left. That means that the chemical reaction will either go in one direction a little bit faster than in the other direction in order to get back to equilibrium. But more importantly, it has to get rid of the stress that the chemical reaction is under. Do you recall homeostasis, feedback loops in biology? It's the same idea. There is a change in the system or the environment, and we are adjusting this change to keep everything at equilibrium. Why don't pressure changes affect solids and liquids? Um, that's because pressure does not change the volume of solids and liquids. So if it doesn't change the volume, then it does not change the concentration. Because concentration is a certain amount in a certain amount of volume, space. So solids and liquids have a definite shape, definite volume. So because it doesn't change, pressure can't change that. That stress will never be evident in a chemical reaction involving solid or liquid, only if there's a gas present. So here we go with Le Chatelier's principle. Le Chatelier was a German scientist in the World War I, discovering ammonia as a key ingredient. I mentioned that yesterday with the Haber process. He got nitrogen from bat poop and used it in the process to make ammonia. By doing so, he was able to keep Germany in World War I for 18 to 24 months longer. And then it says, uh, I have the chemical reaction right here. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to increase nitrogen. So here's the rules. You may have to listen to this more than one time because I'm done as soon as I finish these examples. The first thing I need to do is increase nitrogen. So I put an arrow on nitrogen pointing up. And then there's a rule, and this is the important piece. If nitrogen goes up, everything else goes up, except its partner, it does the opposite. And the partner is going to be hydrogen because it's on the same side as nitrogen. So these two are partners, if you will. So the nitrogen goes up, therefore the hydrogen goes down. And then here's the second most important part. The reaction is going to shift to the side with the most up arrows or fewest down arrows. So that means this reaction is going to shift on to this direction because there are two up arrows on this side of the reaction and there's only one up arrow on that side. Or you could say that the right side doesn't have any down arrows and the left side has one down arrow. So it would shift to the right. Now, having said all of that, it says what happens to the concentration, I'm sorry, the shift is gonna to be to the right the amount of ammonia has an up arrow on it, so that means it goes up. 
the amount of hydrogen has a down arrow, so we put a down arrow. So now the second one is I'm going to decrease N2. So if N2 goes down, you can imagine it's probably going to be exactly the opposite, but let's just do it. If N2 goes down, everything else goes down except its partner. It goes up. So now there's one up arrow on the left side, so the shift is going to be to the left. NH3 has a down arrow. H2 has an up arrow. And that's how you do concentration. Temperature. Temperature is going to be the heat that's in the reaction. So you do it the same way. You go up here to the chemical reaction, and if you increase heat, if heat goes up, everything else goes up except its partner, and it shifts to the side with the most up arrows. So that's going to be to the left. It's going to shift to the left. So if you increase, it's going to shift to the left. The amount of nitrogen has an up arrow, and hydrogen has an up arrow. Ammonia has a down arrow. So that's how you do temperature. Pressure is a little bit different. Pressure, it says this one is a little bit more difficult. You always want to go from the side with the highest number of moles because this side has the most particles, therefore the most particle collisions, therefore the most pressure. So it always goes from the side with the high moles to the side with the low moles. So pressure is going to go from high number to low number of moles. And then remember, moles are represented by coefficients. Moles are represented by coefficients. Moles are represented by coefficients. So here we go. Pressure shift. Get rid of this. It looks to me like on this side I have one mole there and three moles there. And I have only two moles there. It does not count for heat because heat isn't an actual chemical substance. It's the byproduct of a chemical reaction. Heat is not an actual chemical product, okay? So I have a total of four moles on this side, and I have a total of two moles on this side. So if I increase pressure, it's going to be higher on this side. The pressure is going to be higher on the right, or I'm sorry, on the left. So this side is going to have higher pressure because there are four moles. This is going to have lower pressure. So it goes from high to low, from high to low. That means that the amount of NH3 is going to go up because it's shifting to the right. The reaction is shifting this way, so that means this goes up and this goes up, and this goes down and this goes down. So then you take those answers and you plug them in down here. If the pressure goes up, it's going to shift to the right, shifts to the right, and the amount of N2 goes down, H2 goes down, and NH3 goes up. And that summarizes it. Now, why in the world do we need to do this? Okay, you ready for this? Why is this important? This is important because Le Chatelier wanted to maximize the production of that substance. So if he increases the pressure, it shifts to the right. If he increases the concentration, it shifts to the right. If he increases the temperature, it shifts to the left. So he realized that if this reaction is kept cold, if this reaction is kept cold and it's done under significant pressure, we can cause it to shift to the right every time, and we can maximize the amount of product.